Hey Seekers, what's happening? Okay, so what the hell is going on? Why can we not have conversations with people who have opposing views than us? I'm not saying me, us, the proverbial, proverbial us. There are a lot of people that just for some reason, they cannot have conversations with people that do not agree with them. For instance, we had Michael Flynn, uh, General Flynn on Redacted uh, yesterday and a lot of people lost their shit. Now, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with with Michael Flynn. I don't like his stance on Israel at all, not even slightly. I think he's wrong. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. And this is me talking about a general. Um, so take that for what it is. But people were freaking out saying, why are you letting him on? Shut this guy up. I can't believe Redacted is doing this. Blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, you can't just shut off people that you don't agree with. That is not how you fix things. Do you know that when the founding fathers were meeting, it was Christians, deists, and all these different religions coming together, and they put their ideologies aside, and they had a conversation, a real, genuine conversation on how do we build a country that can be inclusive for all peoples. So they put their beliefs aside. They put their ideologies, every, everything that they, they believed in, everything that they had, they put it aside. And the Christians and everybody all got on the same page that we should not be a religious nation. Could you imagine that today with the people in office that we have today? We would be a Christian nation for sure, which would be ridiculous because that would make a lot of people under, basically look at it like it'd be Sharia law, only it'd be Christian law. Same thing. To, to me and other people who are not Christians, it would be the same damn thing. It would be the same thing as if is Islam came in here and put Sharia law in place and Christians had to abide by it. You wouldn't like it, so we wouldn't like it if it was Christian law, right? So it's the, it's the same thing. Like You have to be willing to have conversations with people that you might not agree with. Because if you only stay in your echo chambers, you only want to have conversations with people you agree with, you're never going to get anywhere. You are the problem. You are the biggest part of the problem with fixing this country because you're not willing to step outside of your beliefs. You're not willing to unplant your flag and move it a little bit. You're not able to budge at all. You know, you're putting your, your faith in one person to fix everything or, you know, and no offense to Christians, but you're like, Jesus is coming back pretty soon. I don't have to worry about it. He's going to take care of all of it. No, that just leaves people like me and people who don't believe in that or people who have other religions to sit here and have to fix it for you because you're checking out because you think some magic spell is going to happen. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. So we have to be willing to put our beliefs aside, put our ideology aside, get out of our echo chambers and have conversations. Listen to the other side. Even if you see the other side as an enemy, do you know what generals always teach you? To know your enemy. Watch your enemy very closely. See what your enemy is going to do. What are they thinking? What maneuvers are they making? What moves are they making? What policies are they promoting? But you don't even want to listen to them. And that is a huge problem. You just want to go have your beliefs reaffirmed and, and just live in your little fairy tale land by yourself uh, and with other people that think just like you, but that's not going to solve anything. That will never solve anything. All that's going to do is make it worse because you're never going to come to the table with any kind of solution because your solution is an ideology. It's not, it's not taking bits and pieces. Like if we're ever going to fix this, we're going to have to agree to concede on some of the things that the left wants. We'll have to, and they'll have to concede on some of the things we want. Like, like Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade was a perfect concession. You know, I don't agree with, like, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not in that argument. You know, I'm, I'm basically pro-choice. I don't care. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a dog in that fight. doesn't matter to me. But Roe v. Wade allowed us to compromise on what, like what the terms were. And it was a compromise, and it worked. Both sides agreed on Roe v. Wade. Now, that's not necessarily true. There are some who believe that it should never be, there should never be an abortion in no way, shape, or form. Whatever. That's, that, that is your ideology. That doesn't make it right. 
that is yours, that is your ideology, that is your belief, not everybody's. And in order to fix something, you're going to have to concede on your strongest beliefs, the things you believe in the most, the things that you hold so close to yourself, you might have to let go of a little bit of in order to compromise in order to move things forward. And that's the way it works. When the founding fathers were having these comp- these conversations, they compromised. They found compromise and they were able to shape our nation into what we have, well, not what we have today, but what we had back then. They were able to agree, even though it, today, if you had those different, even if you had Methodists, Protestants, uh, uh even evangelicals, whatever, the, the, the Catholics, Roman Catholics, Christians, the Protestants, the uh, Pentecostals, the Baptists, you know, all of that stuff, all of these factions of Christians, you wouldn't even get them to agree right now on what we could do to compromise. You couldn't get them to agree because everybody gets so just planted deep in what they want. This is what I want. This is what we have to have. Otherwise, I'm not doing anything. And we can't be like that. We can't be like that. It will never, ever work. The only way is compromise. That's the only way. If you know of another way, other than a dictatorship where we let somebody go in office that has your exact beliefs and then they just make it happen. They're like, you know what? We don't care about what the other half of the country wants. We don't care about any other people. This is the law of the land. We're laying it down. That is a dictatorship. That's authoritarian. And that is dangerous. That is not what we want. And if we get that, we're all fucked. Every one of us are fucked if that happens. So we should fight that. We should fight that vehemently. And how do we fight it? How do we fight that? Oh, by having conversations and conceding on issues. Conceding on the issues in the Venn diagram that the government has where they keep us fighting on the outskirts and they pass the stuff down the middle that they all agree on. Well, we need to stop fighting on these and compromise. Say, you know what? Forget the gun argument, forget the abortion argument, forget the gender argument for a while. Let's fix this core, and then fixing the core, those things would work themselves out. Because sanity would enter back into the equation, where sanity has completely left the equation. There is no one sane in the Democratic Party right now that I've seen. Dennis Kucinich, I don't know if he's in there, but who else? Who else in the Democratic Party is making sense? And I'm being genuine. If you know somebody, let me know because I would love to see them. I would love to go go check them out and I will use them in my conversations when I'm talking about the left versus the right. Because right now with the two-party system, that's what we have. I don't agree with it. You know, we're all on a spectrum somewhere between the left and the right. You know, I'm, I'm in the middle. I lean left socially. I lean right fiscally. So, you know, I'm, I'm probably different on a lot of things than all of you, but you know what? I'm willing to concede to get the things that can move us forward to fix the core. And unfortunately, I think a lot of you are putting faith in Donald Trump to do that. But in my opinion, and this is my opinion, hate me if you want, Donald Trump is just the swamp. He's the swamp creature leader. He's just part of the swamp. But I hope, I do hope, That he gets in office and he's the one that either, you know, fixes some of this. If he could fix the economy and all that, that'd be fine. But we're still going to be at war with Iran uh, or or Israel, helping Israel fight Iran and all that. Because Trump is another zealot for Israel. He's he's in the can for Israel. So is J.D. Vance. So is Robert F. Kennedy. So So are all of our politicians, especially on the right. You have some outliers on the left that are that are pro not when you say pro palestine you guys got to understand that's not pro hamas that's completely different but people say oh you're pro palestine you're pro hamas that's not true that's not true hamas is the united states and israel anyway so there's a rabbit hole to go down go down that rabbit hole um but people just you know need to understand that this is the problem this is the problem. You know, we, we need to step away from that thinking. We need to reel ourselves back in and start having conversations, start listening to people as hard as, it, as hard as it is. Find common ground. That's all you have to do. All you have to do is find common ground with somebody you don't agree with, start the conversation from there, 
and then just see where it goes without an agenda. Don't have, don't go into a conversation with an agenda to change their mind. I don't agree with what you're saying. I'm going to change your mind or, or they won't know that. Like, I don't, I, I don't agree with what they've ever said. I'm going into this because I'm going to change their mind. They're going to believe what I believe by the time I'm done. Don't go into a conversation like that. Go into a conversation open-minded because what you generally find is you can find common ground. You can generally find common ground unless they are the absolute fringe of either side. You can find common ground. If they're the fringe, don't even bother. Don't even bother talking to them because they won't listen to a goddamn thing. You got to move in a little bit and there you'll find common ground because we're all on a spectrum between the left and the right, right? We're, we're all in here somewhere, somewhere in the middle, somewhere slightly right, a little more right, a little slightly left, a little more left. The fringe, I don't think there's any help for them right now. We have to bring, we have to bring more of us from out here into the more toward the middle and then the fringe will have no choice but to move slightly in on both sides because they'd have to they'd have to be at least close to us. So I don't know what you think. Please tell me in the comments below. But it just frustrates me to no end that when I see people, you know, that can't have conversation. I have people coming in here all the time and and just telling me like, you have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, about what? Tell me. Have a conversation. Open a dialogue. Don't just hurl insults and run away. That's what snowflakes do. That's what people with no argument do. People that can't, uh, um, can't uh, articulate their argument, they, they say insults and they run away. That's all they can do. They don't know how to do anything else. That's a troll. So if you have a counter to anything that I'm saying or you disagree with me at all in any way, shape, or form, that's absolutely fine. I don't care if you agree, disagree with me. I welcome disagreement. But have a conversation. Start dialogue. Say something. Have a conversation with me or with the community. You can also come over to the Discord and have an even longer dis uh, conversation uh, in the rabbit hole that we have over at Discord. The link is in the description if you want to join the Discord and come over there and join other seekers from around the world. Uh, we have people in there from all over the world having conversations. So uncensored as well. So come over and join that. But don't just... Drop an insult and take off. That is immature, it's petty, and it just shows that you have nothing. You have no argument, no argument whatsoever. So argue, let's argue, let's fight. Let's argue and fight in the comments because you know what? That is how we get to where we need to go. It may get ugly sometimes, but as long as you're not rage quitting, ra like if you get if you get heated, just... Step back, take a couple steps back, okay? Step back, I got trash here on the floor because I'm moving. Take a couple steps back, breathe, do the old woosah, woosah. Think about what you're talking about, think about the comment, think about what the person said, think deeply, try to, try to see where they are, try to understand where they're coming from. It may be hard, but try, and then go back, sit down, and write, a nice comment that can be very like different than them like you don't have to be nice you can be confrontational if you want to but you don't have to call names you don't have to to insult people just have a conversation that's that's what we have to do let me know in the comments if you agree and i thank you guys i'm not like this is not a soapbox i'm not like you know trying to tell you off or anything like that it's just I just, I understand the importance of conversation. I understand that we would not have, <coughs> we would not have the country that we have today, well, that we had before it went to shit. We would not have the constitution. We would not have the bill of rights if they didn't sit down and have heated, drawn out, argumental debates, and then finally compromise. It's what we have to do. All right, thanks you guys so much for watching the videos. If you're new here, subscribe if you like this conversa conversation and want to be part of the community. And if you would like to support the channel for 99 cents a month or more, get your name in the credits, get exclusive content. I just recorded a members only video right before this one. Um, get that every week. Then please sign up to become a member. Just click join uh, either on mobile or on desktop. 
like I said, uh, minimum low 99 cents a month and uh, you'll be a Seeker member. So thank you so much, you guys. Looking forward to the conversations. Have conversations. Slow down. Listen more than you talk. Think and comment. All right. Thanks, you guys. Peace. Thank you.